three, two, one. From an undisclosed bunker deep in the earth, bringing you the best in horror, paranormal, and conspiracy, we welcome you to this week's Zombie Fight Club broadcast with your host, Eddie Rotten. does not look like it. Okay, that oh, looks hey. like us. Woo-hoo, Welcome, everybody, back, back to another fantastic episode of Zombie Life TV. I, th- I think we're at episode 10 or something at this point. Um, we've got a lot of stuff going on. As you can see, Red Rum is not with us. He's in California. Well, he, he might be in town now, but he was in California with uh, Josh Milliken from Crypt TV, and he went to uh, all kinds of different places. That are very fantastic, and many stories to share whenever he comes back into town and, and with us here in the studio. I want to uh, welcome a couple Couple people that are going to come onto the show in just a second. We're going to talk about uh, our lives uh, p- just for a moment, but in a minute, uh, John McKechnie is his name. He's coming on, yeah. and his buddy Tim, who was a, a zombie, and his and his new film called Atomic Zombie. Did I say that right? Is it yeah. Atomic Zombie? Atomic Zombies. Yeah. Okay. Now you see us getting up on these mics uh, like we want some. Hey, How and you that, that's not our fault. About three seconds before we went live on national TV, <laughs> this microphone and some kind of weird feedback sounded like it was taking a dump inside the studio. But uh, I think that we're clear now, and, and things are going good. Welcome back, Paul Fierro. How are you, brother? I'm doing good. How you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good. I'm getting uh, amped up for Texas Terror because it's coming in full force. Oh, yeah. We're getting ready, man. We've got FEMA camp set up. And if you've never been to a FEMA camp, I go to them all the time. i got to tell you, the, the food is great. Everything is really good, um, but there's going to be a FEMA camp inside Texas Terror Challenge uh, Frequency Edition in San Antonio at Mission Airsoft. So go to missionairsoft.com, go to texasterrorchallenge.com, yep. and desolationmanor.com. Desolationmanor.com as well, yeah. All these places you can find out. There's tickets are for sale. I think there's going to be some T-shirts or stickers or something like yep. that. Yeah, uh, we're going to have T-shirts going up for sale here soon. Um, yeah, the tickets are on sale. All the in-game uh, bonus items are all for sale. So what's yep. the what's the biggest challenge uh, as a director of this phenomenal show that you're that you're putting on? <laughs> what what's the biggest challenge besides an aching back that you've come across doing something this large scale? Herding cats and chickens. <laughs> really? Because it, it's all about getting all the pieces in the right place at the right time. Yeah, I thought you were talking about literal chickens, that like cats or something you have in your house. Uh, I am. No, yeah. I, I am. Oh, <laughs> little, little animals <laughs> that he's herding before Texas Terror Challenge. Please come to it. It's going to be October 28th through the 30th. So it's a three-day extreme challenge. It's going to scare your ass off. There's uh, Zombies are going to be there. Yeah, a few zombies. There's going to yeah. be a FEMA camp there, so that's scary in itself. And what it really is is depicting um, the end of civilization and what would really, really happen uh, in, in a real-time aspect. So it's kind of frightening. Life, life in the apocalypse with uh, zombies running around chasing you, men in black running around chasing you, uh, lack of supplies. Um, imagine no electricity for a whole weekend. Right. Yeah, it's going to suck for some of those people. <laughs> it's going to suck for me, man. It's going to suck for me. I, I just hope that the food is good, that, you know, I'll, I might bring a packed lunch of, and no alcohol. No alcohol. So that's going to be hard for some of No other recreational substances. Uh, right. Yeah. So no crack cocaine. Sorry, guys. But uh, a three-day challenge is a pretty big deal, man. So please come out October 28th through the 30th uh, in San Antonio if you're in Texas. Now, uh, I don't care if you're coming from somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, you the, can the last Texas uh, Terror Challenge, we actually had a team drive in from New Mexico the day of the event. Ah, dang, man, that's some so, driving. Yep. Uh, How did they fare coming all the way from New Mexico? Um, 
Let, okay. uh, I, I don't think a few of them are coming back. <laughs> <laughs> New Mexico is a little bit of a drive. Yeah, but uh, we've got one of them that has said she's going to come back to act if she can't convince her team to come back. So yeah. She may be one of our cast. Right, so. right. New Mexico zombies, yay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Um, so when Red Rum comes back, he's going to have a whole lot of stories to share from California because he went and did a whole bunch of stuff with Josh Milliken from Crypt TV. And we wanted to give props to everybody from Crypt TV and, and everything that you do all the short films that you place on Facebook, please go add them on Facebook and check them out. There's a there's a Facebook, there's a Twitter, there's a uh, YouTube page, there's the the website, and it's just amazing, phenomenal uh, what these people are doing with their imagination now with short film, and it might be the thing of the future, man. Like short films are kind of blowing up. Yeah, uh, low budget internet films, man, they're blowing up everywhere. You yeah, you see it. All. I mean, I know people that spend entire weekends doing nothing but watching YouTube. Shorts. Well, well, that that new movie that's coming out, um, Afraid of the Dark or whatever it's called. Yeah, something like um, that. That was a short film. There was like a three minute short film yeah. or something that scared the crap out of me. Yeah, it, it was pretty funny. In fact, I have a friend that I I sent her the link to that, and she now goes, "Thank to you, thanks to you, I hate the dark." It's scary, man. It, it was pretty creepy. But but you get off to that. Like you oh, really yeah. enjoy watching people freak out and scream. Um, but right before we came in here, Paul Fierro showed me some of the uh, um, effects that are going to be at Texas Terror Challenge. And can I talk about that? No. Okay. Well, one of the effects is really cool, <laughs> and I can't talk about it, so we're just going to move on to the guest of the show. <laughs> um, hey, real quick, though. Yeah. Crypt TV is also going to be providing some of the uh, uh, materials for the Terror Challenge. Really? Yep. So like, like, they're, like, they're sending us some of their video, some of their archival footage, their library really? footage. We're going to be using it for uh, some of the stuff where people check in, the introduction of the game and stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah, so we're going to have Crypt TV plastered on this place. Well, today. that's amazing, man. So, Thanks to Crypt TV. I guess Josh Milliken is hooking that up? Uh, yeah, Josh, and uh, I think his name is Max, uh, okay. one of their vice presidents. Okay, there, cool. So. Well, thank you so much to Crypt TV for hooking us up with that. I want to uh, get on with the show, not to downplay Texas Terror because it's, it's, it's a sweetheart of mine. But uh, about a week ago, maybe, maybe a little more than a week ago, I talked to a gentleman named Josh... John. John... Because I was saying Josh Milliken. You yeah. Know, a tongue twister. Josh McKechnie. John McKechnie. John McKechnie. That's what I said. John McKechnie. <laughs> John McKechnie, right? And so I'm talking to him on Facebook. He had a movie called Poor Guy, who I thought we were going to talk about that today. And at first, I thought it was like a dude with supernatural powers who couldn't kill himself, wanted to commit suicide. But I watched that sucks. it. And, and it turned out to be much more than that. Just the trailer itself is actually pretty cool. So uh, I, I know that he's a beginning in in filmmaking. You know, it's yeah. low-budget film. It's indie films. It's stuff that I really like and, and enjoy watching because these people are going out there and doing it. They're, yeah. they're not just talking about it, They're doing it. Uh, but then he called me back, and he's like, no, let's talk about this other one. So now we're going to talk about Atomic Zombies, which is much more up my alley. And I did say Allie, Gavin Stone. It's really more up my alley. So uh, please welcome to the show John McKechnie and Tim. Is that right? Yes, Tim. Tim, okay. Thank you so much, you guys, for coming. Uh, now, Tim was a <laughs> Tim was a, a zombie in your film. Is that is that correct? Yeah, he was a, a couple, actually. At least two, maybe more. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Versatility there. Uh, before I unload, unleash the, the wrath of uh, questions to John, um, what do you think about putting makeup on and being a zombie, man? Is that just awesome or what? Um, some of the days were kind of fun. I know the one day we were inside shooting, and I was like, all right, this is kind of fun. Yeah. And the day it was like beginning of the summer it was just really hot out and i had the makeup on and i'm just uh, they didn't need me for a little bit but i still had to have the makeup on. of course of course how do you eat a, a big mac with zombie makeup on your face that's the, the, like the hardest thing in the world i did you that don't. <laughs> you don't <laughs> you don't you gotta eat slushies or something right how hard is that yeah, on that hot day he was also wearing a full tuxedo too oh my so god Oh, my God. Okay, John, throw down. Um, what happened? Well, what were you doing the day of that you came up with the concept for Atomic Zombies? Lay it on me. Uh, well, my wife was like, you know, we just watched a, a, a zombie movie or a zombie show, and she was like, you should make a zombie movie. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> yes, <that> was, dear. 
I think that was the first spark. And then, like, the whole premise we were trying to go with was, like, every zombie movie has, you know, the group with the doctor, the scientist, the military, you know, general who knows all about combat and whatever. And I wanted to focus on a group of people that shouldn't have survived because they have no useful talents to contribute to survival. And they somehow... I think I know a few of those people. (laughs) That's me. There's no reason at all that I should survive the apocalypse. But I know that God's going to torture me in a way... (laughs) That, that I'm going to go ahead and survive. So I think that I'm going to fit right into your storyline. Uh, please continue. Uh, wh- what happens in the story? What What is the story about other than that? Well, it, again, it's just them trying to, you know, they, they can't agree on anything. They can't find any guns because, you know, everyone's seen zombie movies where everyone's just got, you know, every single weapon they could ever want. But, like, if, if you or me were, were in a, uh, you know, zombie apocalypse and, you know, we were, say, outside in the car when it happened and we didn't go home or go to the gun shop first or whatever, you know, we're stuck with baseball bats or sticks or whatever. You may yeah. be. Uh, yeah, yeah. Are you, are you prepared? Are you a prepared director? Um, you know, you made a zombie movie now. Are you making a zombie movie? Are you prepared for the apocalypse? Um... Well, I'm hoping the story that I'm making is true and, and the morons like me will somehow survive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A lot of our friends say uh, everything that I need for the apocalypse is in my neighbor's house. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> Tim, luck. what about you? Are, you? are you prepared for the apocalypse? I have a game plan on where I'm going. But as far as like getting there, I probably won't make it. <laughs> <laughs> so are you are you working into a spot where you have speak a speaking role in one of John's future movies, or are you just testing the waters to see if this is is your bag? Because um, I know that I would be really crappy uh, with a, a person with lines. I, I'm a great zombie because I fall down anyways. You know, I, I mean, wh- where are you at with it? You want to just continue acting? Um, I wouldn't mind continuing acting. I have a lot of fun uh, getting on camera, just getting out there. And I've been helping John out with Poor Guy. I've been in uh, episode five, I think it was. Yeah. And after episode that's coming out, I'm also going to be in. Poor guy is compelling to me. Let's switch gears real quick and talk about poor guy. And like I was saying uh, in the beginning, I thought that it was a story about a guy who had uh, like some kind of deal to where he couldn't die or something will you uh, explain the the storyline of poor guy for us um yeah it was uh it started just writing notes about someone who was really 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 depressed but they were kind of in denial about it and they're saying like you know i'm doing great right now i mean if something should happen and I would die, that's, you know, fate or whatever. But then they just go and keep putting themselves in situations that should kill them. And uh, it's almost like a cartoon effects where, you know, like Wile E. Coyote in reverse, like nothing ever kills them, even though it's supposed to. Yeah. I mean, is the whole storyline written out or do you go week to week uh, kind of bumping around in your mind? It's seriously just like, as I'm at work, I drive a lot during work and I have a sketchbook and I come up with an idea and I, and I make like a little storyboard of it. And then I call uh, Shadow Beats, who did the music and starred in the zombie movie. I'm like, hey, I got another idea. When can you come to me? <laughs> that, dude, that dude is on top of his musical game. I love his yeah. music. Uh, but it, it leads me to ask my next question. Whenever you're putting a movie together like Poor Guy or something like Atomic Zombie, how, how do you go about making the music and the sound effects for your films um well uh shadow had never done a movie before so we were kind of venturing on that together and i would i am like not a music guy at all like i listen to lots of music but i couldn't <laughs> tell you like i couldn't teach a class on it so i'd be like for this part where they're walking i want it to be like and then it's like and he'd be like it sounds like me when I'm trying to do effects (laughs) yeah it's like I say I want something that does this and everybody goes no yeah no that's not right yeah (laughs) whenever I would do whenever I would do a commercial or something somebody would call me and say okay I I want the sound to be like this and then they would hum a melody to me but I needed for it to be 30 seconds long or 60 seconds long yeah and so then I have to come up with this whole thing out of nowhere and then for them to tell me no that's not really 
not really what we want. So <laughs> and, and like type out dun dun dun. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. When it gets higher or something like yeah, that. totally. The reason why I ask, man, is there's a lot of people that are watching right now uh, across America that uh, that make any films that really enjoy any films as, as much as I do and there's a lot of things that have to come together including your family has to be on board your friends have to be on board and everybody has to be on point for you to be able to do uh, what you need to, to make happen in front of the camera is it hard to juggle your your personal life uh, and with your friends and with your family alongside of, of making the movie that you want well, the, the most important person to get on board was my wife, and she was. She wasn't involved because she was too scared of the zombies, but uh, she was, like, behind it. And I think everyone else, I either got them to be involved in the movie or drove them away by annoying them by trying to get them to be in the movie. Right, right. <laughs> right. right. That's hilarious. That's when you just tell them, hey, we're going to go be zombies in the park someday, and don't tell them. Right, right. <laughs> See, because, uh, Paul, whenever you do zombies, and just like William Instone, we have a friend here in town that, uh, that does a zombie movie, Among the Dead, and we straight up gorilla shoot in a park or something or, you know, dress up like zombies and go out and do it. Do you guys have to do that, or do you go talk to your mayor and see if you can reserve the, the places that you're going to shoot? Uh, no, nah, we're a little more gorilla. <laughs> He's like, hell no, I talked to the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> we went out to one of the parks and just yeah. said, okay, let's go down in this little ravine. And right. people were walking by going, uh, yeah. what's well, that noise down there? <laughs> you know, I talked to a dude uh, a couple months ago that is shooting a, a indie film with zombies in Washington. In Washington, there's there's no guns anywhere. you know, So it's hard for him to figure out how to do it. So he has to get airsoft guns and go just outside the borders of town so he can shoot his movie. Because if he steps one step inside, then they're going to find him. Yeah. So they're always watching him, even though it's a low budget film with, you know, 10 grand or something like, which is a lot of money to me. I don't have 10 grand. I don't know. That's a, that's I, could, a, I could do a lot of stuff with 10, 10 grand, grand on effects. How do you find the money to fund your film? Are you on GoFundMe or, or Indigo or how do you do it? Uh, it was seriously like zero budget. Like if, if I couldn't afford it out of my own pocket, we found a way to work around it. Um, that's why I was lucky enough to have shadow do the, the music and, you know, my friends and family starred in it and, and did the makeup and, you know, everything else was fixed in post. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, like just today, a couple hours ago for, poor guy we were filming on some railroad tracks that are used a lot yeah that's, <laughs> and that's when i was testing busy, you so we just went in and we're like oh wow look at all these no trespassing signs let's uh, try to do this quickly. <laughs> yeah that's a man that's the best way to do it because i know trust footage of that sign yeah <laughs> that, that's good tv right there get a, a picture of that sign no trespassing or do, do not skate you just put a skateboard on it that's yeah. good tv yeah after you finish atomic zombies uh, what's going to happen? Do you have something boiling in your mind what you want to put out next? Well, Atomic Zombies is done. That You can actually buy that on Amazon right now, and it's coming out on DVD in uh, October, October 11th. Um, I mean, I, I have a sequel in mind, of course, but I, I think I would actually have to get a budget to do it. Right now, we're just working on Poor Guy. It's just episode by episode, really low stress, which is what I need after three or four years of high <laughs> stress for the zombie movie. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's what we're doing right now. Three or four years. Did you sprint, did you spend three or four years on atomic zombies? Yeah. Uh, again, that's what happens when you can't pay people. <laughs> you gotta, when you're paying for it out of pocket, and, uh, with it, you know, food and beer is enough to get them to come out and yeah. get stuff. So, so, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, there were a couple of people that went away to school the first year, so I'm like, uh, we have to get all your lines right now. So just don't worry about the other person not being here. Uh, just say yes and then say no, and then I'll just cut it together. And then right. if, if you really look, there's like the backgrounds will change seasons or something, maybe right. conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. So are you pleased or are you uh, always searching for a better camera or better lighting or, uh, uh, you know, new actors and writing feverishly to make something just perfect? Or are you pleased with uh, where you're at? I mean, if I was if I got too anxious in in crazy over being perfect, it would never, never get done. Yeah. So I'm. I, 
it, it's not a perfect movie by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, it's you know it's out there now, and it's like I said, I put three or four years into it. I'm I'm happy with it, but yeah. I've learned a lot since then. So the stuff we filmed four years ago, I'm like, uh, I kind of wish I could reshoot that. Right. <laughs> Again, if I kept doing that for everything, I'd be like, oh, well, let's get this stuff from two years ago. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, there comes to be a point where you, you have to put it to bed and say, all right, this isn't necessarily what I wanted, but it was from the heart. It's what I, you know, the concept is out there. Let's do it and keep moving. Otherwise, you'll go around in circles. The trailer's good, though. The trailer's compelling, and, and I like it. Oh, well, thanks. Yeah, fortunately, we had to... I had to cut out a lot of the actual cool, like, you know, zombies and blood and stuff because it had to be a green band trailer. But uh, it still has some cool uh, music by Shadow and some cool shots. and uh, Nudity? You got some nudity in there? No, I, I can't ask people that I'm related to or know. That was <laughs> Man, you got to go third-party questioning. Just call me up, and then I'll call them and ask them if they'll be nude in your film. You, you know, no harm, right. no foul. All right. Sequel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's equal. Cool. Well, hey, man, uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, I can't thank you enough, uh, both you and Tim, man. I, I know that you guys have a, a lot of stuff planned in the future and stuff you might not even be talking about. But I see, I'm going to look into my crystal ball real quick, man, and, and I kind of see you writing a book. Um, cause you sound, sound like he's got a lot of stories to share, but not a lot of time to put it on, on film. You know, have you ever thought about writing a book? Uh, I mean, who hasn't but <laughs> there's, there's like so many there's so many hundreds of projects i'm going to do if i had all the time in the world oh so. uh, add oh. that add is kicking it i got the same thing <laughs> yeah. that's that's funny well uh what do you think um i'm really interested to see the atomic zombie because when i watched the trailer i actually laughed to tears when the guy was trying looked like he was trying to throw a duffel bag and it yeah. kept rolling off yeah. the side of the ramp <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i was just like wow that looks like people i know so yeah. i'm really interested to see it um it wasn't even in the script it was just things were like oh well here's a bridge that's half built let's let's add it in yeah yeah <laughs> i know i like when the dude's telling the girl um well zombies are after your brains and i'm after your heart <laughs> <laughs> that was a good line, man. Yeah. I'm going to put that on my headstone. <laughs> I, I think we'll see it out there. Um, we're going to have to go get it off of Amazon yeah, and have yeah. a little viewing party of it. Yeah, or something, it'll, it'll but, be fun. Uh, let me know when you do the, the uh, sequel. Maybe we'll have to take a road trip and be some zombies. Yeah, 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 man. We would love to. And where can we find you guys online? Uh, I guess the best place right now would be, well, facebook.com slash atomic zombies for the movie. And then my Twitter is, uh, John McKeck, uh, J O H N M C K E C H. Uh, right now it's a lot of poor guy updates. Um, okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the zombie Facebook page, you can buy it from that. You can, you can message us. You can, uh, check out there's hundreds of photos there's a an album of artwork which is cool and we're just looking for more stuff like that so yeah. very cool man cool. very awesome. cool thanks for coming to the show man uh whenever you have updates to poor guy or whatever let us know and you're welcome to come back anytime awesome sounds good all right we'll see you guys later thanks Thank guys you. nice to meet you you too thanks well, well that was kind of cool right a little skype yeah. action there uh, i, I kind of like the 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 look into uh, his brain when he put this together. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah, I always wonder what they're doing because one of the best jobs I ever had in my life, uh, it was I, I found an ad in the paper while I was taking a dump. And I just found it, and, and I decided to call him on the phone, and I literally got an interview over the phone while I was taking a dump, man. It's like one of the best... It was one of the best moments of my life. <laughs> you know, it's awesome. Of course, I got fired from that job, but, you know, what, what do you do? Uh, you got to move on. Well, I mean, it's. Uh, I see a lot of stuff that drives me doing the haunt stuff. Yeah. I see it from him. Right, yeah. Because I, I think there's a lot of things that I'll be puttering along at work. I'll be driving home. I listen to audiobooks on the way home, and, you know, for some reason somebody says something or whatever, and, and I get this whole... Oh, we could do that. Yeah, we could do that. We could figure out a way, way to make this happen. Not only could we happen. do it, we could do it better. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's a trap, by the way. 
<laughs> no. I can't tell you how many times it's like, oh, it looks so easy. How come yeah. we can't make that chest explode? Yeah. yeah. I've seen some good chest explosions, you know. Yeah. Um, Not on a $42 on budget. Yeah. <laughs> Do for forty two bucks, man. I mean, <laughs> balloons with like bloody water in them, or like you know, like gel or jelly. It, it, it's great, man. Like Megafoot. Have you ever seen Megafoot? We had no. Megafoot on the show like two years ago, and it's all practical effects. And they they made a huge Bigfoot monster beast, and he cut this dude's head off that was having sex with a chick inside a tent, and, and it all looks very real. He's like, oh, we did that for like 20 bucks, man. You know, no problem. I think it's lighting, smoke, and mirrors, man. That's all it is. Yeah. It's gotta be. I, yeah, I know it has to be. Yeah. It's just, uh, I, I'm not the practical effects guy. I'm right. the guy that comes up with the evil, hey, twisted. Hey, let's do this in the dark and make <laughs> yeah. them run into trees. You know, and yeah. somebody else has to make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I, I can't believe our time is already up. Thank you again, uh, everybody from Atomic Zombies that came on the show. Um, John McKechnie yep. and Tim. I can't remember Tim's last name. Or was it Tony? It was Tim. It's Tim. He's going to forever be known Dude, as Dude, I'm sorry. Tim. <laughs> Tim the zombie is what you're going to be called. Hey, I want you guys to find us on uh, on the internet, okay? Zombielifepodcast.com. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Uh, go give us a share. Go give us a like and comment on, on anything. If you want to see something on the show, let us know because uh, next season starting soon. We're going to the big studio, yep. which is going to be cool. And Gavin's already approved like strippers and donkeys and like a maypole with, you know, little people. It's going to be incredible. So, he didn't tell you about that? No. Okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's a dream that I had. I think you were on the toilet again. <laughs> I was on the toilet again. <laughs> hey, everybody, thank you for coming back to Zombie Life TV. Until next week, uh, kill them all. Kill them all.